Hello everybody. I've been a little under the weather, but I'm at that weird place where I'm not quite fit to go back to work. But I'm bored and getting antsy, so I figured I'd do one of these videos while I'm at home. Our next camera is the Fujika AZ-1. It's from 1978. It was the last, or one of the last, uh, M42 mount cameras from Fuji. I'm on a little bit of an M42 kick. I just did the Spotmatic, and the next one is as well. This guy's odd, kind of a transitional camera, uh, right before they went to the new mount for Fuji cameras. It's aperture priority auto exposure with through the lens metering. It has a horizontally traveling cloth shutter. It's electronically controlled from a half second to a thousandth of a second. And according to the manual, it's continuously variable, uh, similar to the shutter on the Maxim 7000. A half press will lock in, whoops, that was a whole press. A half press will lock in uh, your exposure. It doesn't lock down, you have to keep your finger on it. But that way if something's backlit, you get up close, meter it, keep your finger on it, back up, recompose, and take the shot. It has several manual speeds, kind of interesting. It was sort of a one-upmanship because most electronic cameras, you, you can at least do bulb and their flash sync speed. This one has a 60th of a second, a 250th of a second, a thousandth of a second, and bulb. Those speeds will all work with no, mat with no battery. Obviously, you get no metering with that, but... It's an interesting concept to give you a few choices if your batteries die out in the field. Um, has a hot shoe, a couple of extra contacts. There was a dedicated flash called the Auto Strobo AZ, um, and it would do uh, flash automatic flash metering uh, if you had that flash on it. It also still has a PC cord socket and a regular hot shoe, so it'll talk to just about any of the old flashes. The shutter button's a little bit interesting. It's got a normal thread for uh, a cable, but it's got this lock, because the metering turns on with a half press of that. So that's nice if you have it in a, in a bag or something so you don't accidentally drain your battery. And the wind lever has to be all the way back uh, for it to work, so what they did was they created this hinged bit so that you've got a little bit of a standoff so that you can cock and fire pretty rapidly. It's kind of an interesting concept. It seems like it would be fragile, but this one survived. has an 8-second self-timer. Um, the release is under the lever here. Press that, and then it'll go off in a second. It takes three 1.5 volt batteries. I've got LR44s in here. Loads on the back instead of the bottom, kind of like the old uh, Fuji range finders. There's plus or minus two stops of exposure compensation. You move it away from the AE on the dial. That only works uh, with auto exposure. Doesn't do anything if you're shooting it manual. There's a stop down button right here. Uh, if you need a depth of field preview or if you're metering with an old lens that didn't have the pin for having the camera body stop down the M42 lens. It's a little crowded right here. There's this little lever, you push it in towards the camera body and it's a lens release. Most M42 cameras didn't have a lens release. So right here it's a bit crowded. you got your depth of field, your lens release, and your self timer. ISO is settable. From, 30, from 25 to 3200, like a lot of cameras, you lift up this ring around the shutter speed dial and set your ISO right there. This one's got an original kit lens. It's a Fujinon Z1 f3.5 to f4.5, and the range is 43 millimeters to 75 millimeters. Uh, they call it seven components and seven elements. So apparently each uh, lens element is its own group. I think that's what they mean by components. So it's one of the earliest cameras to offer a zoom as a standard kit lens. 
They also had a 55 millimeter f1.8 uh, lens that was the other standard kit lens. On the bottom, it's got electrical contacts here and this little connector here for a motor. There was a two frames per second auto winder available. I don't have that. In the viewfinder, um, there's a split image that's pretty good, pretty bright. It doesn't do that thing very much where if you're not looking at it exactly right, half of the circle is just black. Um, so it stays pretty bright. There's a micro prism around that. And then the matte field, it's got a pretty decent viewfinder in it. Along the right hand side from the photographer's perspective, there are LEDs um, with the speeds. It goes from 1000 and then the bottom one is 2-15 meaning a half of a second to a fifteenth of a second. If the thousand blinks, it uh, means you're overexposed, you're going to have to stop down. And if the 2-15 blinks, it means uh, you're underexposed and you're going to have to open it up so that it can you know, choose a better shutter speed. That also acts as the shake warning. I used some PhotoWorks 400 speed film uh, it expired in January of 2006. My shots are just okay. Um, I'm not sure my C41 chemicals were about exhausted. And the film's a little old. A friend of mine gave me a pack of eight of these. So I'm trying to get away from using expired film to reduce the amount of variables. But I did shoot with it and I got a few shots that are, that are worth showing to people. So... Um, I may pop some other lenses on here and take this guy out for another spin. I'll see you then.